And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another part of the Pokemon Go walkthrough. This edition is going through a world island. That wasn't as hard as I originally thought it would be. My name is Frostbite, and we are getting ever so closer to being done with this game. I keep saying that part after part after part, but every single part we keep getting one step closer to the end. I technically could have said that from very part for part number one, saying we're very close to the end here, even though we're just getting started because every part gets closer to the end. But we truly are just getting that much closer. This is like one of the last three things that I have to do. Um, within the Pokemon game to finally be done and you know I this was one World Islands was the one that I was dreading from the very beginning you know I knew this was 100% run and I knew I'd have to do it eventually and from my childhood I just remember it being one of the hardest mazes to go through and it ended up not being that what whatsoever you know you need to have um, obviously Whirlpool which I have with Polly Poliwag, and then of course Flash, which I have with Togepi in order to go through um, the caves to begin with. Within these caves, the number of Pokemon you can run into, if you have a Max Repel like I do, then um, you don't have to worry about it. There are also 12 items all around. A number of them are hidden, and I'll be honest with you, even without the guide, I was able to find all the items, including the hidden, uh, hidden items, without it. Um, you can kind of see that um, within this part because I only had one run through, but like that right there, you know, uh, a lone rock sitting in a corner, it kind of just screams out that something's probably hidden in there. Once you get used to the rhythm that Pokemon likes to put their hidden items, you kind of have a sense for where they all are. Now, I, I do have my item finder on me, and I do end up using it a lot to make sure that I'm not missing any last minute, because I only had one test playthrough for doing the real thing. And again, I was amazed I was able to do an all-in-one test, play, test playthrough. And remember where pretty much everything is, other than, you know, forget, thinking that I forgot if you having to use the item finder. But again, once, once you get start getting the pattern of where they put hidden items in the corner of things, in these weird little shaped areas that doesn't make any sense why it's there, you know, then something's hidden in there. It, it, it's a lot easier. Like right here, you know, I kind of think maybe I forgot one over here. Then I use an item finder, it's not there, so I realize, okay, it's not in that one. But you, like, you get feelings for ones that are over there because that's where a normal item would usually be hidden at. So, and with that, all 12 items are really easy to get, and if you just keep using max repels, this maze isn't really a maze at all. In fact, if you are here for the one special thing that I'll be obviously getting to once we get to it, um, you don't even have to do this whole entire cave. You All you have to do is go to the Northeast World Island, and you have a top route and a bottom route. You take the top route, and it takes you all the way to the special event. So you don't even have to do all of this unless you want to capture every single item like I do. You know, and that, that's, really is, that's really all there is to it. It's not as a pain in the ass as I originally thought it was going to be, and I was so happy about that, because like I said, from the very beginning, I was dreading this. I just, you know, from, from my childhood, and again, everything just seems harder when you're old, when you're younger, and when you're older, you realize, oh, it's not really all that hard, and that's kind of what happened with me. I realized that, boy, this, these world islands just are not as hard as I thought it would be, so, you know, the, this part only takes eight minutes. World islands only takes eight minutes. You know, if I told myself that when I was younger, I never would have believed it. I spent hours in this place trying to figure out where the hell I was supposed to go. And now that I'm older, it just it makes so much sense as to how easy it really is. But since we are with, in fact, the caves, that means there are some stats to get. Now, the stats remain the same throughout all the areas, so I'm going through one set of stats, and like I said, it remains, it remains the same no matter what part of the, cave, of the World Island Caves that you are in. This is what the stats are. Here we go. Zubat in all three versions, 30% chance all across the board, and a gold bat in the gold silver version is a 5% chance all across the board, in the crystal version is 5% chance in the morning and afternoon with a 10% chance at night. Seal in the gold and silver version, 15% chance all across the board, while in the crystal version is 25% chance in the morning and afternoon, no chance at night. Krabby, gold silver version, 50% chance all across the board, while in the crystal version is 40% morning and afternoon, and 60% at night. So basically, gold silver version, you have a certain percent chance all around and this is one of the other few caves where in the crystal version it differs from day and night why I do not know I do I don't I don't not know I don't know how to talk right now so we are you know we're, we're, we're already done with the first half of that whole entire cave gotta go through these stats even a little bit faster. Uh, surfing within any water part of it, 60% chance tentacool, 10% chance it's a tentacruel, and 30% chance it's a horsey. And while fishing, <coughs> pardon me, 
Krabby, 15% chance. Magikarp, 85% chance. With the old rod, Krabby, 55% chance. Horsey, 10% chance. And Magikarp, 35% chance with the good rod and the super rod. Krabby, 40% chance. Kingler, 20. Horsey, 30. And Seedra, 10. And that is throughout the whole entire cave of all the stats you can get. So really, the biggest thing to catch here really is a Horsey and a Seedra. If you haven't gone out of your way to get one just yet. A uh, Seal, uh, you, I think there are other areas you can get a Seal already. But a Horsey and a Seedra... I think this is actually the only place within Generation 2 you can actually capture it unless you trade it ahead of time. So again, more for the Pokedex and Seedra, especially if you have a buddy to trade for Kingdra, is a really good Dragon Water type to get. But this is the cave I was telling you about. You go to the northeastern part of the World Islands. There are four areas. Northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast. Go to the northeast one, take the top path over here, and you're immediately on your way to going into the special event. It brings you to this ledge that you can only get to by taking that certain path. Uh, take that, you know, going down. Um, you do not, you know, th there's a waterfall over here. You don't need waterfall. You can use waterfall to get back up this way. It's kind of pointless because um, there's a whole entire separate route you can use just to get out, period. And if I remember right, the special Pokemon can only be attained if you get all 16 of the gym badges. I believe. If I'm wrong, go ahead and let me know. But I think you can only encounter a certain Pokemon when you have all 16 gym badges. Now I switch for Ampharos, and I don't know why. As you will see, it's completely pointless. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is level 70 Lugia. Highest level Pokemon, wild Pokemon you'll be facing with the entire game. Um... Gold, a silver version's legendary that you can get in the gold version again after you have all 16 gym badges, I believe. And this is where I decided to use the Master Ball because I figured first I was just going to fight it with Ampharos and just beat it, but then I figured, you know what? I haven't shown how to use what the Master Ball does yet. I might as well do it right now. Master Ball guarantees the catch no matter the level, no matter the Pokemon, no matter what. Boom, you catch it. So that was a very anticlimactic battle right there, catching myself a Lugia. Um, I do apologize, I guess, but, you know, at the same time, I don't because, uh, you know, some people were kind of confused that I destroyed the Ho-Oh, which, you know, I, I ju it just happened. I, I didn't want to go through trying to catch it. So with Lugia, I figured, you know, instead of just destroying it, I might as well just use the Master Ball to catch it, and there you go. There's Lugia, you know, silver version, um, legendary Pokemon, and one that you can get in the gold version, just because. Once again using the item finders to make sure I wasn't missing anything, which there is nothing to get within these areas, but, you know, it's always good to be safe and sure. And that's Rural Islands. That is all 12 of the po of the items you can get. And the whole entire purpose of the Rural Islands is to get yourself a horsey and a siege or if you haven't gotten it yet, and to catch the legendary Lugia. That's all the Rural Islands is, you know? It looks, com it, even to me as a kid, it looks confusing because there's four separate entrances you can go through, but it doesn't account to anything because you can just go to the northeastern one, take the top route, and go against Lugia. That is it for this, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next time for the last, you know, last couple parts of the game.